So a couple months back, I casually mentioned that my wife and I might be obsessed with The Office, and ever since then, I've had countless requests to rank the seasons of The Office. So today, I'm going to rank all nine seasons of The Office from the worst to the best. And before I compiled my list and started to make my notes, I did run it by my wife and she did approve this list as the definitive, the correct ranking of the seasons of The Office. Normally I don't say that. Normally I don't say my list is the right list. It's more of an open discussion. We all have our different ideas about all these different things, but this one was approved by my wife. And since this one is so near and dear to our hearts, it is objectively speaking, the definitive ranking of the seasons of The Office. So for us, we didn't start watching from the get-go whenever the show first debuted. We actually came in about halfway through the show right after the movie Get Smart came out. We went to go see that in the theaters and we like thought, this Steve Carell guy is really funny. Doesn't he have a TV show? And so then we started to backwatch the first four seasons of the show on loop. And so this show became kind of like this definitive comedy of our marriage. So with all that said, I got three little things I want to mention right before we get started. First off, go ahead and tell me your ranking down below in the comment section. Which ones do you love? Which ones do you hate? And why? Because why is a lot more interesting than a number with a season next to it. Second thing, if you might notice my eye is very red. And you, the question that might come, might come to your mind is, why is your eye red? And I don't know, I'm wondering the exact same thing, but yes, my eye is very irritated. It has been for a couple of days now. Third thing, if you like my content, please consider supporting my channel over on Patreon. I do kind of weekly live streams for them. I have exclusive content, behind the scenes stuff, get their input on different things. So if you enjoy my channel, want a little extra stuff, or just want to support my channel, please consider supporting me over on Patreon. With that said, let's go ahead and get started. Coming in in last place is the last season, season nine. Before I dive into the negative on this one, because I got a lot of negative about this season. I'll start with the positive. And the last episode of the season, which is the last episode of the series, is actually quite good. They hit all of the right nostalgia buttons and brought back Steve Carell for just the perfect amount. Like you wanted to see him one last time. So the final episode itself was quite good and my wife and I have rewatched it a number of times. The rest of this season, however, I find borderline unwatchable. Rewatching it about a month ago in preparation for this video, I had the exact same feeling. I don't know if I want to finish rewatching this just to do a video. There's so many different things about this season where it just feels like they lost the purpose of the show. They stopped realizing what we loved about the show on so many different levels. So the characters just in general are much less likable. Whether you're talking about Andy Bernard, and so, you know, he goes on this trip for three weeks on a boat so he could go off and shoot the Hangover 3. He comes back and, like, is so selfish, you just hate his character. And then he wants to go off and be a movie star, like, goes off on talent shows, and you just look at him with pity. Not the way you look at Michael Scott. You just hate it. Like, I hated him during this season. And then the, the biggest problem here is that you, what they did with Jim and Pam which so much of what we like about this show is the relationship between Jim and Pam, and they decide to go with marital problems for this season. They're trying to figure out how to transition the show to ending and then going off to do something different, and the way they do that is through marital problems, and to get the marital problems, they have to act out of character. And you get to a point in time where they have like a fight on the t this comedy TV show, and it's she starts crying and Jim's just being a total jerk. She's being clueless and not reading obvious social clues about what's going on. And then it ends and Pam's like getting a hug from another guy that's not Jim. This is not the reason I watched The Office. I don't, like, I don't want to watch this. I don't want to see these characters in this situation. Just so far off from the appeal, the hook of this show. So I, I don't find this season to be enjoyable at all. I don't plan on ever watching this season ever again. Coming in in eighth place is season eight. Now with the departure of Michael Scott and Steve Carell, there was obviously a gigantic hole left in the center of the show. And early on in the season, you kind of rooted for the cast of the show the same way the characters in the show are rooting for Andy Bernard as he kind of steps into that lead role. And it wasn't as good without Steve Carell, but it, but it was okay. It was like, all right, all right, let's see if we can do this. Let's see if we can make this work. And then as the season progressed, it really devolved into some of the weakest aspects of 
this show in general. And so much of that comes down to the brand new characters, in particular, just the weird, overt sexuality of Robert California. But that's supposed to be the joke of the show, that he's this weird um, guy like that. And that stuff to me is has always been the weakest aspect of the show. And that's, in a lot of ways, I'll talk about this here. As the show went along, the focus of the humor and the nature of the show kind of shifted. Early on, it was a show dealing with the odd quirkiness of different kind of people in work settings. So in a lot of ways, it was a group of normal people reacting to over-the-top people. So Michael Scott Dwight were these over-the-top ridiculous characters doing some ridiculous things, and you're watching these kind of stereotypes of different types of people you meet in an office, how they would react to the absurdity of Michael and Dwight and a couple other ridiculous people in there in time. And then as time passed, though, on the show, more and more characters turned into these wacky, wild characters. And that's what Robert California was from the beginning. It was just adding more of these ridiculous characters. Nelly was always a ridiculous character. And the thing about the ridiculous characters, it wasn't about clever observational humor, like at the beginning of the show, where people are reacting to these observations of weird, strange things that happen in work environments. It was just broad, over-the-top humor. And that's what this season was. Like, what if he, he's selling, that Robert California's selling his house and he's going through all this weird stuff and Jim can't leave the party and then he takes his clothes off? What? <laughs> what? So for me, this season, once again, like season nine, isn't something I would choose to put put on and rewatch. And number seven is season seven. Now I'll start off by saying there's an enormous gap between season seven and season eight. Uh, this season was, was fine. It was a decent send off for Michael Scott. It's not one of the great seasons. Rewatching it, there's not a whole bunch of memorable episodes. There's not like a bunch of my favorites or anything like that. Really the standouts in this episode was uh, Threat Level Midnight, which leans towards that broad comedy I was just talking about. It's kind of a ridiculous episode, but it's, it's, it's a throwback nostalgia type episode for all these references, Easter eggs up till that point in time. So there's a lot of fun in the absurdity of that episode. And then of course the send off episode for Michael Scott pulls at all the heart strings in just the right ways. And it's a very Michael Scott type of thing to do because of his concern. Of course, the story arc of seeing him connect with Holly and come back and him get to win. You just love to see all of that stuff. The real downfall for this season where it of the Michael Scott seasons easily was the weakest for me wasn't even the part with Michael Scott. It's as soon as he left and even as he was leaving and they brought in Will Ferrell's character, D'Angelo Vickers, to transition things, you could see that there was going to be a problem immediately. Just the transition was very clunky in what they were trying to do. And it was very telling of what the last two seasons were going to be because it, the show just kind of really starts to unravel at the end of the season. And even just as the idea of like, you didn't do Michael Scott leaving as the season finale. You did it two, three episodes from the end. That's not good. And speaking of broad humor again, you know, they make Dwight takes over and shoots someone. It's just so far into broad ridiculousness that that's that's the stuff that I don't particularly like in this season. So for the most part, the part while Mike, Michael Scott was on the show, it, it's good enough. It, but it's not the greatness of the previous, the early seasons of the show. Coming in in sixth place is season five. So this is the first season that my wife and I watched live on TV. As I mentioned before, we started right after season four when Get Smart came out. And so then when the fall came back, this was the first one that we watched live and got to see Michael and Holly. Just so great to have Michael find that right person. And there's some great little moments in their relationship as you're, of course, rooting for Michael to succeed. Um, there's other some great moments in the final episode. Actually, a great season finale with the p company picnic and getting a little bit more Michael Holly in that episode. The volleyball game as Dwight's trying to delay the game as Pam has to go to the hospital and then you kind of the secret little reveal at the end of that. That one some great nice touches in there it's also fun this was my introduction to Idris Elba was Charles Minor in season five of The Office so he's Charles Minor to me he's that's the definitive Idris Elba role for me as, as silly as that might seem um the reason that this one kind of comes into the later half of the Michael Scott seasons for me is that um 
There's, it's kind of light on just great episodes, those standout, really strong episodes. And some of the stuff like the Michael Scott Paper Company, I don't think the, the story arc fully plays out just right. I would have liked it if they'd given us more time with Michael and Holly. It seems like as soon as they got them together, they tore them apart too soon, uh, considering that that's such an important storyline. Their relationship is so important for the series as a whole and Michael Scott's character. It seems like you needed to do more than like four episodes of them together. Um, but you know, in general, still a very solid season. And number five is season six. Now this one in a lot of ways kind of runs parallel with season five to me of, other, of being good seasons that had some story arcs that I wasn't crazy about, like the stuff where they promoted Jim and then they dumbed Jim down. I wasn't particularly crazy about kind of that storyline. And as I mentioned before, just some of the too many characters that are over the top and wacky and crazy and playing broad comedy instead of kind of smart observational humor, some of that stuff, but there's some great fun episodes. That's what pushes this one above season five for me, it's just very memorable episodes. Of course, uh, Niagara being classic episode and finally giving us the Jim and Pam wedding and they pulled it off. They found some ways to make it so um, relevant to the exact time that the, it came out in a way that makes total sense for the show and the way the characters interact uh, with the Chris Brown song and everything like that and how Jim would react to something that would be so tied to a moment in time and wanting his wedding to be timeless at the same time. Uh, just great episode. Of course, you get the delivery in the episode as well where the baby comes. It's very memorable. One that I don't rewatch and even rewatching it going through this, I didn't rewatch it. Scott's Tots stretches my ability for awkward Michael Scott too far. That's where this season still had the magic. They were still firing on all cylinders of knowing what their show is about, whether you're talking about the awkward humor of Scott's tots or you're talking about the sentimentality of those relationships and the delivery in Niagara. Uh, so this one makes it at number five. Coming in at number four is season one. Now this is kind of the oddball season of the show as they were still trying to figure out the tone in vibe that they were going for, how similar, how different did they want to be from the original uh, The Office from the UK. And the original show is a very different tone from what they ended up going with with the show, as it's more cynical. David Brent is far less compassionate, relatable, likable than Michael Scott, and it had a much more distinct British style to the humor. And you see a lot of that in the first season of the show. This one has such a distinctly different flavor to it that it makes it interesting and very unique to me. But even though this season is only six episodes long, it has a bunch of memorable episodes in my mind. And perhaps that's just because I've rewatched all of them. 78,000 times, but like when he, I think about Diversity Day, The Alliance, Basketball, these are episodes that frequently come to mind when I think about The Office and how kind of all, all they just once have these scenes, these lines that I just remember that I quote back to my wife all the time. And then, you know, Amy Adams comes in at the end of the season. So, so much about this one is memorable. And while it's tonally wildly different from the rest of the series. It's still got some very funny, very uncomfortable moments in it. Bringing us into the top three is season four. Now this is The Office in full stride. The first half of this season is just classic, classic The Office that competes with my top two seasons entirely. I mean, just all of just the moments, the Jim and Pam finally coming together, uh, Ryan getting promoted and his ego kind of taking over. And then for me, what I think is the peak moment of the show's awkward humor that it's kind of the quintessential The Office, you think awkward, uncomfortable humor. The peak of that is the dinner party, which is just an amazing, amazing episode that I absolutely love, probably too much, and my wife definitely does not like it as much as I do and doesn't want to put it on nearly as often as I do. But just this season uh, has so many amazing, amazing, amazing moments that it highlights when the show kind of dips in quality at times. Other than the dinner party, that second half of the season is not nearly as memorable to me. And I think it has something, there was a writer strike that happened. This season was supposed to be 30 episodes. It turned out to be less than 20 episodes. And I'm pretty sure that affected the quality as things had to be rushed, finished much quicker. And I, I just don't like, it feels like there's just a very obvious drop in quality at a certain point in time in the season. And so that's the reason it like that the first half 
absolutely is top two quality for me. Our runner up is season three. Now this was tough for me because both seasons two and three are like the two seasons of any TV shows ever that I have rewatched the most times, which means there's episodes in this season like Gay Witch Hunt, which potentially are the episodes of any TV show ever that I have watched the most times because I, I just love both the humor of this season of the show, as well as the character arcs and the risks that they took, the new characters that they added in. Because you could think that what they did at the end of season two with Jim leaving, he goes off to a different office. And so this season starts off and the show is split in two with one of our lead characters somewhere else. And they're adding in a whole new set of characters into the mix by doing that. That could ruin the show. But it doesn't. It just gives us a whole new flavor and twists on things as you get to see Jim's perspective on a different office and it works. And these new characters that they add into the mix are just the perfect right mix at just the right times to make things interesting. Karen's like a character that might be perfect for Jim in a world that Pam doesn't exist. But we are in a world where Pam does exist, which makes for an interesting back and forth between the two of them because Karen and Pam can get along with each other. But at the same time, they both kind of like the same, or not kind of like, they both like the same guy. You get to see Michael be successful as the branch is kind of shut down and you get to see Michael as the loyal manager that has to merge these two places together. All of this makes for the elements of the show that I love the most, that it it's connected to reality. The, the types of like the Jim and Pam love triangle with Karen and all that stuff feels like a real thing that would happen. It feels valid. It feels like a real thing that's authentic, whereas the later seasons just feel like this total farce kind of show of absurdity. This is where it was kind of grounded and at its best for me. But coming in in first place is season two of The Office. This is safe to say my favorite season of a comedy show of all time. And it's because after season one of The Office, they cracked the code very quickly. They figured out how to do it right, which is we wanted these characters to be broken, flawed, very real type people with very real faults, but we wanted them to be characters that would succeed. They cracked that code that that's what we wanted. We wanted to see them win. So they established Michael Scott as kind of this doofus boss, but then they make him this guy that really cares about his employees. He doesn't know how to show that all the time. He oversteps boundaries. He does all sorts of stupid things, but he really cares about them deeply. And as they went along, they're also very smart to make the point, he's not just an idiot. So you get seven episodes into the season and they do this episode called The Client, which as you're going through the episode, you think, Michael's embarrassing himself, doing all this wacky joking stuff with the client. Michael makes this massive sale that they didn't think they were gonna get, that Jan thought that he was blowing the sale. And for the first time, us as the audience, somewhat seen through the eyes of Jan, like you realize Michael is excellent at something. In those little moments of victory where you're like, that's what we want out of this show. That's what they, they cracked the code. As you go through the season, it's other things like the Jim and Pam relationship. As you watch it, it becomes so clear as the season goes along that these two characters belong together and Pam really does not belong with Roy, that by the time you get to the season finale and Jim says something, it, it's very powerful as like, you can understand why she, Pam being this nervous person doesn't want to make hurt Roy's feelings, doesn't know how to course correct necessarily. That's some of her faults, but she also clearly knows on the inside that she really does want to be with with Jim and you feel that like there's this like tension that was building all season that just has this massive release and payoff at the end of the season so I would assume this might be my wife's favorite episode of television of all time N not just because it's hilarious and funny and they found all the right beats uh, the amazing line where uh, Michael Scott is talking down to Toby even Michael Scott showing up to a party and finding himself in a very Michael Scott situation having two dates and not knowing how to properly respond to it. And that's really kind of this whole season for me, whether you're talking about the injury, the Christmas party, performance review, the Dundies, it's just iconic, classic, um, the office. This season is the standard by which the other seasons are measured. This is it, this is classic. I mean, this, when you think, what does Sean like in a comedy show? Here it is, season two of The Office. But anyway, go ahead and tell me down below in the comment section how crazy, where, where we're off. And what are your thoughts? Can you defend those later seasons? All that fun stuff. Let me know down below in the comment section. I, I'd love, to, if someone loves those ones, I'd love to have a defense of them of how they're not 
just indefensible betrayal of what I love about The Office, tell me down below in the comment section. And if you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I do movie reviews, TV reviews, ranking videos. Uh, sometimes I talk about my favorite comedy TV show of all time in detail like this video right here. But the key thing is I don't want to just talk about movies and TV. I want to talk about them with you. So join me down in the comment section. Let's have a lively discussion. If you've already clicked that subscribe button, go ahead and ring that bell. Uh, so that you get notifications when I drop new videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching.